How's it going? Thought it's about time I do a bit of an update on the aquaponics and a couple of people have prompted me as well online so here you go. Uh, a few things have changed, uh, the new radial flow filters in, I also have a bio filter in there and we've had a few issues with the air compressor so I had to nip out and buy a new one and I'm also slowly progressing on the um, aquaculture build, the straight fish farm so I'll give you a bit of a sneak peek at that as well but um, yeah I'll give you a bit of a quick look at a few little things. To begin with my messy cupboard. Um, this is just my bits and pieces cupboard. Uh, up the back there we have the battery powered backup air compressor. Just hooked to this guy. I have a little, another little uh, piston power pump I went and bought the other week. It's only about a 2000 litre an hour. Maybe a little bit smaller actually. What was it? Uh, 20 litre a minute. So yeah, it's a, a smaller jobby. It's going to be for the quarantine um, tank for when we get new fish and bring them into the system. So I've got to hook that up. I've been meaning to for ages and I never have. Also come in handy if we have any sick fish. It'll just be a 200 litre or a 55 gallon jobby. Down here we have some power cords and the power supply for the relay that runs the air pump, uh, the backup one. Down here, I'm a big diaphragm pump blue. It was a four and a half thousand litre an hour jobby. It blew, so I need to get new diaphragms to replace in there. Um, shouldn't be too much of a hassle. So I thought, well, I need a backup one for the aquaculture system anyway, so I thought I'd try one of these guys. It's a little piston pump, um, same size, four and a half thousand litres an hour, I think, or thereabouts, and it's fantastic. Um, it's so quiet, I'm really, really happy with it. You can't hear it up in the house. I think it helps that I've got it suspended here as well, um, but it's not vibrating anything. It's fantastic, so really impressed with that. And it's got my battery charger and a couple of backup pumps there. So, yeah, I'm really impressed with this little jobby, and I think I might keep that as my main one, and when I get the diaphragm for that one, I'll have that um, ready to go as a backup for the um, aquaculture build. So, over here, the fish. Harvested eight the other week, and the 14 that are left are rather happy. Venturi's flogging along rather nicely in there. Made a few alterations with it, and it's just small things, length of pipe and that sort of thing, and it's doing a lot better now. And yeah, these, these fish seem fairly happy. None have complained. I've had no bad emails from them, so must be all good. One thing I have noticed, though, is moving the direction of the Venturi pipe, the outlet, has swept a lot of the solids, if this thing will pick up on it, into the corner over there. So about once a week I'm just grabbing my little vacuum setup. Where are we? Whoops. Um, this little jobby here just connects straight onto the um, overflow in the into the radial flow filter, connects straight onto there, and that just picks up any solids that are laying around. Um, I've had people suggest to put a brush on the end and I've thought to do the same thing. I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. So yeah, fish are happy, tanks travelling along nicely. New radial flow filters in, um, posted a clip on that on how I built it. One little adaption's been made to this, um, and I'm sorry I've forgotten your name, um, suggested, that person, sorry mate, uh, suggested that I put a little drain tap just about a third of the way up the radial flow filter, so when it comes time to cleaning out the whole filter, I do my little jiggle siphon clean out every um, couple of days to get most of the solids out, but when you need to do a whole filter clean, if you can draw off the majority of the water, in our case I can run it straight into our sump tank, nice and easy via gravity, um, you're not wasting a lot of water during your clean out. Before, I was having to empty the whole barrel to do a whole clean out, so like when I clean the sides and the roof and everything, so this way it's going to be a lot easier, save a lot more water. I have got a bit of a dodgy fix here in this hole that I showed in the um, plugging clip. Um, the courier dropped my uni seals to the wrong address, so not very happy with that courier company, they do it all the time. So what I've done is I've put a um, DWV uni seal in there, I have um, four or five of them. They take the smaller pipe, the smaller 50mm pipe, which is a waste pipe, so I've just had to dodge a fitting in there. I needed the pressure fitting for this build over here, so um, yeah, that, that's going to come out now. I've got my new uni seals and the plug, where is it? Over here and the plug will be going back in there from the inside, so I just thought I'd explain that for anyone who picked it up. Biofilter. The biofilter is connected. Um, I've got it running from the top of the radial flow filter into the base. I'll take the lid off, and the idea behind that is the, that way the water gets to flow through all the media. There's about 20 litres of media in there, 
So it all gets contact with the media before it's taken out through and out to the garden beds. It's still connected to the inch and a half or 40 mil line into the 50 mil or two inch line at the moment. All that will be changed when the beds get moved around. So, but it's chugging along and it's doing its job. At the moment, it's being powered by um, just some air stones. Um, I've got some other air stones on, on order. I did hook up the little DIY Venturi down the bottom here, but I just don't think the power was enough um, in the pump. And I really don't want to oversize the pump in this system yet. I'm pretty happy with the one I've got in there. So I'm just running it on air stones. But what I can do down there is I can put a tap on there so that way I can actually use it to drain the water out of here back into the sump at any time so it doesn't have to be wasted. Or in the future if I end up adding more grow beds and the like I can put a Venturi on there. So the, the hole's not wasted, it will serve a purpose in the future just not for now. And I'm happy with running the air stones in there and yeah, getting a bit of bubble action going. So the media, yeah. I've, I'll give you a quick description on how this is made up. Um, I've got the water coming in down the bottom. I've actually had to reduce it down to a 40 mil fitting. I'm just using one of these little. One of these. What the reason I'm doing that is these 50 mil um, ball valve screens. Um, sorry, foot valve screens. The gaps in them are too large, and the media can fall through it. Now the whole idea of having a screen down in this area here is so the media doesn't flow back up into the radial flow filter um, when the pump's turned off. So I needed some sort of screen down there. I was going to run with a little homemade jobby like this, but I decided against it because it was taking up too much of the base and I wasn't getting an evil, even bubble spread like I am now. So just a short little jobby, the 40 mil version, just on the side there. And yeah, it seems to be working fantastically. The restriction down to a 40 mil hasn't retarded the flow that much, as you can see. So the water's not building up in here, so I'm happy with that. Um, the air stones, yeah, just the, just the five air stones on there at the moment. We've got some more coming. The outlet into the grow beds, off to the grow beds, is set up like this. There's a 90 degree elbow there, it goes down in the water like that. Loads of slots cut in the side with the drop saw. Loads of holes in the bottom of the screen. And the water's just been taken out nicely. It's doing a fantastic job. So, I'm really happy with this. As you can see, this stuff is slightly discoloured. It's getting a little bit of a yellow tinge to it. So that the, means the bacteria is setting up shop. And to help seed the bacteria in here, I did a bit of a dodgy. I grabbed one of the paint strainer bags, filled it up with media from the grow beds, and I've popped it down the bottom there. It's been down there since the, the um, unit's been in place here. The idea being there's bacteria directly in this drum that's able to seed the media. Um, the bacteria would be floating through the system anyway and would seed it. I just thought I'd give it a bit of a kickstart with that. The whole idea behind having this biofilter on here is because the beds will be moved around and when they're moved around a couple of them will be offline for about a week as I um, redesign the area and the beds themselves putting in a few other things. So the bacteria in the biofilter are going to pick up the slack. That's the whole idea of me having it in there. After the move around happens, I'll probably only end up with two beds. Probably, um, actually, two media beds that is, and a floating raft bed, or a deep water culture bed. And then along the front here, where these beds are at the moment, behind the greenery, um, I'm going to have a couple of buckets set up. I want to try um, Brock's Dutch buckets, double Dutch buckets setups. So check out um, Brock's little clip up there. Uh, fantastic double bucket unit. And also want to try out, look at this little pesky fella. Also is for the chickens. Also want to try out um, some wicking style buckets. It's a hybrid, a soil bucket with a net cup in the bottom. I saw it on a clip ages ago when I was looking into aquaponics and I've never been able to find the clip again. Um, it's just got a 90 mil tube running through to the sump tank uh, with net cups in the bottom of a bucket and then just wicking up into soil. So, But other than that, the growth in the system is going ballistic. The sweet potatoes, I'd say they're really nearly ready for harvest. So really happy about that. Um, the parsley, it started to seed and then it started to put out more greenery, so I've been harvesting the greenery. greenery. Um, pepinos had another kickstart, which is a bit of a shame because this plant needs to come out. So I'm going to try, and that is one of the plants I'm going to try and transplant out of here. The warrigal greens being another one, this plant here, um, fantastic spinach substitute. It's got some more starts to go in. Uh, this warrigal green, is, we just keep hacking it back and it just keeps growing. The lavender's bounced back nicely from when I tried to kill it. Um, look at that whopper. Look at him, hey? Oh, there's two of them. 
He's mocking me. Your chicken food, buddy. So, he's off to the chooks. Um, oh, there's another one down in there. Hang on, guys. Just going to have to pause the clip. So, as you can see, this Warrigal Greens is pretty much will just taken over. Fan grows fantastically in the aquaponics. So I've got some in a wicking bed and also in just in a soil bed. And the aquaponics version is by far the best. So, this is going to be a stayer. I'm going to try and transplant this one as well. Just to give you a sneak peek at the fish farm, <laughs> this is as far as I've got. Um, I actually had the pipe work all set up for the radial flow filter the other day and then I had a bit of a think about it and I've brought in some other bits and pieces and I was going to redesign it slightly, but yeah. So, basic setup, radial flow, moving bed biofilter slash trickle filter, and then over onto the sump tank over the back there. So, yeah, the lids are cut. You've probably seen photos and bits and pieces and I've got all the bits and pieces I need to make it up now. It's just a matter of um, working out how to do it. There's no plans to this, so I'm taking my time. There's nothing, you know, I don't want to end up with, you know, two and a half thousand litres of water in this thing to realise I've made a mistake. So, there you go. Hopefully, there'll be a clip on it at some point in time in the next month. So, there you go. There's a bit of a not so quick roundup on how the aquaponics is travelling at the moment. Um, pretty much, we're not going to change until school holidays in a couple of weeks' time. One, two, or three days straight where I can move everything around. I know I've said it before and it must be getting boring to you guys, but yeah, it will happen. So, also to the fish farm, I'm going to try and get it up um, at least a wet run. Um, a run with the water in it without any of the joints glued, just to see if I'm happy with the way the water's flowing by Sunday. Uh, because Hamish Gale is popping by. Hey! Hamish and his partner, um, he's Hamish121212 here also on YouTube. They run a farm in northern New South Wales called um, Naughty Goat Farm. So check out his channel, just up, no that side, we'll go that side. Check out his channel and he's got some stuff on there on beekeeping, chickens, wicking beds, aquaculture or aquaponics. So have a bit of a look at that if you're interested in that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so I really want to show him the system just up and running and ticking over. He's got a rather large project in mind with some huge tanks he's got, so yeah, it'd be good if I could show him that and we could bounce a few ideas off each other. Um, other than that, I'm pretty much all flat out at the moment with the soil patch, getting a couple more beds ready, planting out our brassica crops, um, cleaning out the chicken pens. Uh, the neighbours are doing the fence, so the chickens are confined to their main pen at the moment, so I'm going to try and steal as much of the good scratchings from their day pen as I can to feed up these other beds. So that's the job for today. So anyway, I'm not going to get to it if I keep prattling on, so I'll pretty much will leave it there. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, pop them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. Other than that, have a fantastic one people and I will catch you later. Cheers! Feeding time at the zoo. Come girls. There you go, three of them gone.